In this video I'm going to map the Zone K2 to Ableton to create a basic 4-track setup. Now assuming the driver is installed correctly and the device is being seen both by your computer and Ableton, then I can proceed. Open a new blank Ableton document and go to Options Preferences. In the Audio tab, under Driver Type, select ASIO and Audio Devices, select your Zone K2. In the channel configuration, output config, select 1234 stereo. In the MIDI sync tab, under input, select track and remote, and in the output, select remote. So the reason I enable this button is so that data can be sent from Ableton back to the K2, enabling me to take advantage of the illuminated LEDs. So for instance, on play, when I play a clip, one of the buttons will light, and when I stop a clip, that light will go out. So the first thing to do is delete the MIDI track, as I don't need it, and insert three new audio tracks. For audio routing, I want to be able to listen to the Q signal coming from the K2 via the headphones out on the front, which on the sound card is 1 and 2. So ensure that all of your channels are set to master, and in the master out have Q set to 1, 2, and master set to 3, 4 which are the phono outs on the back of the K2. Notice when I selected 3-4 that the solo button illuminated, which I can now change to Q. Over on my audio tracks, the icon has changed to a headphone, which can now be pressed and will enable me to Q the signal. So let's map some controls in Ableton. The first thing I want to do is map a rotary encoder that enables me to scroll up and down through my audio clips when these are populated later. So go into MIDI map mode, Select the small numerical box furthest right in the master channel and turn a rotary encoder. Now it's important to set this to relative to's comp. Um, because this is an endless rotary encoder, in fact it's a push turn encoder, if it's not set to relative to's comp in Ableton you'll get some pretty funky results which are more than undesirable. So come out with MIDI. I can now scroll smoothly between the audio clips when that's populated later on. So now let's map the Q to my controls. Select MIDI map, select the Q bus level and turn the next rotary encoder. Remember it's the same type of encoder so it's important that it's set to 2's comp. Select the headphone icon in software and press the button on your controller that you want to activate your Q in the software. And come out with MIDI map mode and you can now see the Q buttons are active and the Q level can be adjusted via this rotary control. So now let's map some basic start and stop controls in Ableton. For this I'll just drag in some random audio clips that I have. And then in MIDI mode, select play and press a button on the controller. stop and press the button on the controller that I want to stop my audio. While I'm here I'll map the audio level to the linear faders of my K2. Again select the parameter in Ableton and move the control on the controller. Now while I'm here I want to multi-map one control of the K2 to two parameters within Ableton. Now this little blank box here enables the waveform to appear in this section of Ableton when you press play. So select the box and again press play which have already mapped to the play of the actual track. Come out of MIDI mode. You'll now see that as I press play the button on the K2 lights up and as I press stop the button goes out. While transport is playing and the button's illuminated, if I press it again, the audio file will appear on the software screen as I'd intended. So now I want to add some EQ controls to each channel to emulate a typical three band EQ mixer. So for this, I will select a three band EQ from Ableton, EQ3, 
and just drop it onto each audio channel. Now you can either drop it directly onto the channel or if the channel is selected you can drop it into your audio effects at the bottom. So I'm going to map these three controls and these three buttons of the EQ in Ableton. So into MIDI mode, select a parameter, turn a control and do that all the way across. Likewise with the button presses, select a parameter and press a control. Come out of MIDI mode and you'll now see that I have control over the three band EQ and the total kill. So I'll just map the rest of the controls and I'll be back after this wipe. OK, so now I've mapped the EQ to the remainder of the three audio tracks and again you can see that I have control of the EQ parameters now in Ableton. So the next thing I want to do is demonstrate the push turn action of these encoders at the top. They're the same encoders at the bottom but I've only mapped the rotary controls of these. Now I want to map a push and a turn of the same encoder. And to do that I have a plugin called Superlooper which doesn't come with Ableton by default but I believe is free and you can download it. Just Google it if, um, if you have any difficulty finding it. So again, drag one Superlooper effect onto each audio channel. And in MIDI map mode, select the parameter you want to adjust, in this case the loop length. And the button at the top on the press of the encoder. So now you can see that as I press the button, the effect comes on and off, and as I turn the encoder, the loop length changes. So again, I'll just map the other four, and I'll come back after the wipe. OK, so that's it for mapping the K2. Let's see what we have. We can cure audio track and press play. We've got our master volume output, three band total kill EQ. And of course, the super looper at the top. So this kind of setup is ideal. If you're playing at home, just plug the phone outputs into your amp. If you're playing in a pub or a club, you could use the same outputs into their PA. And it really makes for a nice, small, portable setup. It's going to fit into a generous laptop bag. And it's all you really need to get started with Ableton and the K2.